what is the best food for fat loss? In order for us to answer the question of what is the best food for fat loss, we must first understand how fat loss actually works, how fat loss actually operates and occurs. Whether we gain body fat, stay the same, maintain body fat, or lose body fat is dictated by our calorie intake, the amount of calories that we consume. Okay, now this is called the principle of thermodynamics. And at this stage, it is as it's as proven as gravity. Okay, it is how the body works. If we were to address your metabolism as calories expended, let's use an example of 2000 calories. So let's say in a 24 hour period, your your body expends 2000 2000 calories, which for a lot of you, you know, wouldn't be wouldn't be far off. It depends where you're at in regards to body weight, etc. But just for argument's sake, let's just say 2000 calories in a 24 hour period, your body expends uses burns 2000 calories. If you consumed 2000 calories every day, as an average for a week, by the end of that week, you will have maintained your level of body fat. You wouldn't have gained body fat, you wouldn't have lost body fat, you would have stayed the same. If you consume more than 2,000 calories, let's say 2,200 calories, those excess calories, that surplus of calories are going to be stored as body fat. And that is how fat gain works. It doesn't matter whether those surplus of calories come from broccoli or donuts. It doesn't matter. The overconsumption of any food, if it leads to the overconsumption of calories, leads to fat gain. We're not talking about fat gain. We're not talking about maintaining today. We're addressing the process of fat loss, the best foods for achieving fat loss. In order for us to elicit fat loss, resulting in your desired weight loss, you must consume less calories than what your body expends, a calorie deficit. It doesn't matter what diet you follow. It doesn't matter whether you follow keto, paleo, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, it's irrelevant. If you are not consuming fewer calories than what your body expends, you will not elicit fat loss, end of. There is no cheat, there is no shortcut, there is no workaround. If you are not in a calorie deficit, you will not elicit fat loss. It doesn't matter whether calories are either mentioned or counted. Calories still count. They still matter. The principle of fat loss is incredibly simple. Consume fewer calories than what your body expends. And it doesn't matter whether those calories come from cauliflower or cookies. If you are in a calorie deficit, you will elicit fat loss. Of course, there are some nuances within that. If you consumed 80% of your calories every single day in ice cream and then consumed salad for the rest of the day and did that every day, technically, if you did that every day, would you lose weight? Yes, but you're going to have zero energy. You know, you're going to feel horrible. You're going to be hungry all the time. That is not something that you will be able to continue to do. Okay, and of course, you know, being insulin resistant, being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, that's not something you could do anyway because of blood sugar levels, of course. But today, just for argument's sake, we are addressing fat loss and fat loss only because fat loss for people with type 2 diabetes, ladies with type 2 diabetes is no different. The same principles apply. Consume fewer calories than what your body expends. So once you understand how fat loss actually works, it's clear to see that there is no best food for fat loss. No food in isolation on its own causes fat loss. In order to elicit fat loss, you must end your days, your week in a calorie deficit. Just like no foods in isolation on their own cause fat gain. It is your overall calorie consumption which dictates whether you are going to lose body fat or, or gain body fat. So to answer the question, what is the best food for fat loss? There really is no such thing. There really is no such thing. If you was to ask any of the ladies that we coach, are you on a diet? They would all say, 
Absolutely not. They all still eat their normal favorite foods. If you if you follow me on Facebook right now, you'd have seen me just share um, Amanda's progress. Amanda just got a A1C test back. It was 5.5. That's normal. Within the normal range, she's lost over 24 pounds and over 16 inches, and she has eaten her favorite normal food. And this is how, and once you grasp the fact that no food causes fat gain, no food causes fat loss, then you, all you need to do is manage the food, the calories at which you eat and manipulate them to end in a certain, certain number in order to achieve the fat loss result without having to go on a diet. And that's really important for two reasons. First of all, diets suck. They're unsustainable. Let's be honest. If diets were efficient, you wouldn't be here watching this video right now. They're unsustainable. You do them for a couple of weeks. You feel like you're sat on this island all by yourself whilst everyone else enjoys themselves. You can't eat any of your favorite normal food and it's just all too hard. It is too difficult. Several weeks later, you've quit and then, yeah, it's it's just too difficult. Yeah, you conclude that it is all just too difficult. That's the first reason why we coach a lifestyle change, not a diet, because it is enjoyable. It is sustainable. It is just a normal day. The second reason is because if you can lose weight and lower your A1C whilst eating your normal favorite foods, then imagine how easy it is to apply that same set of skills and knowledge to maintaining the results at which you achieve because it is just the same thing. If you follow, you know, Nutrisystem, something which you become reliant on their food, what are you learning? What are you learning? Nothing. You're eating the food at which you are being told to eat. You become reliable on that food. And as soon as you stop eating that food, you return back to what you know. And what you know got you to where you were, which is why rebounds from you know, diets, conventional diets and other programs like Nutrisystem have such a high rebound rate because you don't learn anything about how to maintain these results. If you are part of the minority, which is lucky enough to actually stick to it long enough to actually achieve your results. Hope that makes sense, ladies. I hope you found this helpful. If you have, comment helpful down below. If you've got any questions, any concerns about any of the things that we've spoken about, let me know down below. Take care, ladies. Have a good day, and I'll speak to you soon.